I was told you wanted to talk to me so talk. We've got just about 55 minutes left. I leaned back in my chair. I was tired of playing with the pictures. Sherry made an effort to keep her eyes from straying to the pictures and look only at me. She took a deep breath. Ron. Honey. Whoa, back up there. I said quickly. She pulled back, surprised at my vehemence. You don't have any right to call me honey, sugar, or sweetheart, or anything else, I told her. You gave that up when you started playing with your little F toy in Vegas. She flinched and swallowed hard. She couldn't meet my eyes, but she couldn't look at the pics either. The wall behind me was suddenly being given her complete attention. I didn't mean to, to step over any boundaries here, she said finally. Okay, I said, just so we understand each other. She nodded. Ron, she paused and looked at me, expecting me to object again, I guess. Ron, she continued, first I want to say I'm so sorry about all this. I never meant to hurt you, you've got to believe that. I don't have to believe any such thing, I retorted. What the hell would make you think you could F around behind my back and not have it hurt me? She looked at me for a long moment. I never meant for you to find out, she said in a low voice. And if you hadn't found out you wouldn't have been hurt. I snorted again disbelievingly. What? No harm? No foul? Sherry, either you are pretty damn stupid or you think I am. From what our friends are telling me, you were F this guy on the dance floor and in the casino. You went off somewhere. They couldn't find you and didn't manage to corner you until the next afternoon. F toy was there in your room with you, and you didn't even try to hide it. Just how the hell did you think you were going to keep me from finding out eventually? She sat looking at me without saying anything for a bit. Then why didn't you stop me? She asked sharply. What? I said. I wasn't there, Sherry. She shook her head. When we came back, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you stop me from seeing him again? She was getting worked up, but I couldn't understand what she was talking about. Why didn't you fight for me? You're supposed to love me, she blurted. I shook my head in confusion. This was hard enough without her talking in riddles. Sherry, I said wearily. I didn't know what you were doing. How could I stop you? Read your mind. Then it struck me. Oh Sherry, Melissa and Kel didn't tell me about Vegas until I'd already caught you with your F toy. She winced at my repeated description of the blonde guy, but I wasn't in any mood to be gentle. You want to know how I caught you? I asked challengingly. She nodded. There was a small tear at the corner of her left eye. I saw you, an F toy while I was sitting in a van at a stoplight, I said shortly. He had his hands so far up your skirt. I'm surprised his fingers weren't coming out of your mouth, I told her. Her posture changed. From one that had been aggressive, she slumped into one of despair and pain. I waited. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. I'd said my piece. I am so sorry you saw that, Ron, she said finally. I'm sorry I let him do it. I'm sorry all of this happened. You sure didn't look like you were sorry that day, I told her. In fact, you looked like you were having a ball, I said. No pun intended. She cringed in her seat before straightening up. I came here to be honest with you, and I'm going to do it she said. I was enjoying it, she said. God help me, I was, but no more than I would have if it were my fingers, Ron, she said. But they weren't your fingers, Sherry, I said softly. It wasn't a D, and they sure as hell weren't my fingers. They were his, and his had no damn business being there. I slammed my hand down on the polished tabletop, my open palm making a loud, smacking thud echo off the law books and the shelves all around. I had an exclusive rights contract with you, Sherry, I said. It's called a marriage. No one else in this whole world had any right to put his hands down there except me. Damn it to hell. I sat back, trembling with anger. I fought to keep my temper from exploding. The 24 pictures on the table had all skittered across the surface of the table. To occupy my hands and mind, I began picking them up and placing them in a neat stack in front of me. I'm sorry, Ron she said after a while. You're right. I should not have done anything with that man. I know that. I don't have any excuses at all. For the first time today, I agree with you, I said, 
cutting off whatever she was going to say. Yes, yeah, she said. I know. She took a deep breath. Ron, would it make any difference if I told you that the night you took all these pictures that I told him I wasn't going to see him anymore? I glanced up from my pile of photos. She held my eyes with her own. I shrugged. No, not a hell of a lot, I said evenly. She was startled. She thought she had something important to throw into the mix. Sherry, you cheated on me in Las Vegas, right in front of our friends. When you came home, you didn't come to me and tell me about it, and then you F him three, four, five a dozen times more here in our town. You didn't stop when you came home. What's that saying? What goes on in Vegas, stays in Vegas. Boy, that sure didn't apply to you, did it? Not one damn bit. Hell, you were like that energizer bunny you just kept going and going and going. You know what, Sherry? I've been told cheating gets easier every time you do it. Apparently, it is. You sure didn't seem to have any trouble finding places and times to F your blonde guy. I doubt you would have ever stopped if I hadn't nailed you with some really good pictures and then filed for divorce. I looked up from my mound of pics. You tell me you weren't going to see him anymore but, to put it bluntly, I don't believe you. I told her emphatically. I think you're lying in your teeth. It's true, she snapped. Right after we went into the room, I told him this would be our last time. I'd already decided to stop seeing him. I was feeling guilty and ashamed and I wanted to end it. She reached out, snagged one of the pictures, and held it up in front of my eyes. You see this? She demanded. He's trying to hurt me here. He was punishing me for telling him I wasn't going to be with him anymore. A little bit after you took this, I got away and kicked the SOB in his B. I shook my head. I didn't want to see what she was trying to show me, and it really didn't matter. It looks to me like you're getting a little rough thing there, and you were liking it, I said. I held up my hand to stop her from saying something. But let's say you're telling the gospel truth. I leaned on my elbows partly across the table. If it's true you wanted to stop F him, Sherry, why the hell didn't you give him a call and tell him? Why was it necessary to give him a goodbye F? She hung her head. I know. It was wrong, but don't bother. Sherry, I don't want to hear it. Even if I accepted what you say at face value, I don't believe, and I never will believe it, that you would ever have stopped so long as your secret life was still a secret from me. Oh, you might mean what you say. You might have even done it for a week, a month, six months, maybe. But you'd have gone back to him or found someone else the first damn time you got pissed off at me again, or you had car trouble, or when you had a bad hair day. Sooner or later... You'd have had that urge to get a little strange and pay me back for every real and imaginary problem we've ever had, wouldn't you? Isn't that what you were doing, Sherry? I had worked myself up again. I had to pull back. I slouched in my chair and tried to look more impassive than I felt. Sherry was crying again. You don't have to talk to me like that, she whispered. I'm your wife. I looked away in disgust. Not for very long, I said cruelly. We're separated. The courts have recognized it, and all we have to do is wait another 52 days and it's all over with. And besides I talk to S and W a lot differently from the way I would to my faithful wife, assuming I ever have one again. The tears were rolling now. Ron I'm trying to say I'm sorry for what I've done. Can't you understand that? I'm sorry. I shook my head. Abruptly, I was weary of the whole thing. Okay, Sherry, you're sorry. I'm sorry too. Hell. Everybody involved in this damned mess is sorry. So what? Where does that get us? We sat quietly for a while. Sherry, I said slowly. You've ripped the heart right out of me. I tapped my chest. Right here there's a big hole. A whole lot of emptiness inside me where I used to keep the image of a woman I loved more than life itself. A woman I trusted with my most private secrets. Someone I could count on to be good to me when the whole world was against me. You were my friend, someone I could talk to trade opinions about anything under the sun. You were my lover, the one woman in the world I would ever make love to for the rest of my life, and the only woman I wanted to make love to me. You took that all away and I can't get it back, I told her. My voice cracked on the last few words and I had to stop. Sherry was crying harder. Ron, I interrupted her. Sherry, I said slowly and carefully, you've half killed me, F that guy betraying me, betraying yourself, and betraying our marriage. I took a deep breath. 
I sure hope whatever you got out of it was worth wrecking our marriage, and his cause I heard this morning his wife kicked his ass out and is filing for divorce too. That was true. An investigator working for my attorney had tracked down the garage that had sent a wrecker to pick up two sets of slash tires from a motel, take them back to the shop for repair, and return the tires to the motel and mount them on two vehicles. The wrecker driver had remembered a furious brunette woman and a subdued blonde man as owners of the cars. Each of the billing reports had included the license plate number of the vehicle involved and, once he had that, it was child's play for the investigator to find out the man's name and all kinds of personal information. When my attorney told me the guy's identity, I found a phone number for his home and got in touch with his wife. She became enraged when I told her what I knew. I wasn't surprised she had filed for a divorce too. 